I'm here with Dr. Romano to do a problem on percent yield. Hi, I'm Dr. Romano, a professor of organic chemistry here at Romano Scientific and the author and the creator of the Orgo Man products and the Dot Destroyer book. I want to go over a problem with you involving moles and percent yield. Now, the percent yield of anything is going to be the actual yield divided by the theoretical times 100. The actual yield is what you guys get in lab. You do the experiment, and this is what you find. The theoretical yield is always the amount that's in greater amount, of course, because that means the yield that you get if everything went perfect. We all know things don't go perfect in lab, but if it went perfect, you didn't spill anything, the temperature was perfect, there was no leakage of anything, there was no error introduced into the experiment, we got the theoretical yield. So come around and let's have a look at what I mean by a percent yield. We're gonna give you two phosphorus reacting with three iodine to give two moles of PI3. Always make sure that a problem is balanced. This is one of the biggest mistakes that I see general camp kids, the freshmen make, is they forget to see if an equation is balanced. Here I was nice to you and I gave it to you balanced. I say that there's 48 grams of iodine reacting with excess phosphorus. If 28.2 grams of the PI3, that is phosphorus triiodide, is obtained, find the percent yield. We all know this is the actual amount. So the actual amount was 28.2, and what we got to do is we got to get the theoretical yield. So the first thing I did is I started off with my given, we have 48 grams of iodine and I converted to moles. Now that I got into moles of iodine, as you can see there's three moles of iodine for every two moles of PI3. So let me take this away and you can see, you write down the conversion factor. There's two moles of PI3 for every three moles of iodine. This is why it's important to have the equation balanced. Crosses out. You look up the weight of PI3, it's 412, so there's 412 grams of PI3 per mole. Moles cancel, and we get 51.9 grams, which is around 52. On the actual dat, the numbers will be much nicer, so don't be too worried about the numbers. The percent yield is the actual divided by the theoretical times 100. So what we're going to do is we are going to put in the numbers. We, the actual yield is 28.2 divided by the 51.9. That was our theoretical times 100. And we get 54.3%. Let's do one more question that I think you'll enjoy. So that was pretty straightforward on how to do percent yield. Let's do one on percent error. A student measures the density of an object and finds the density to be 0.78 grams per centimeters cubed, and the known density is the 0.890 grams per centimeters cubed. This is a common experiment in the freshman lab. We make the student do the density, and then we see how close it was to the actual. Um, what we did is the percent error is going to be the absolute value of the experimental minus the theoretical divided by the theoretical times 100. Um, the reason why we do absolute value is sometimes you might be over the actual amount, sometimes you might be under. So what we did is we put in the experimental that she finds is 0 0.780. We know the theoretical, which was the known, 0 0.890, divided by 0 0.890 times 100. Usually for the data, they'll just make you set it up, and that should be good enough. If you finished it out, it was 12.4%. Hope that gives you a good idea on how to do percent yield and a problem involving the percent error. All right, good day to you, and I'll see you in study group. Bye-bye.